What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. My name is D Free, and LR Goku SS3 is about to drop on Global. So we're gonna go over all of this stuff. Gonna give you guys all my thoughts, and uh, this is pretty awesome. Very excited for this. Hope you guys enjoy. Subscribe if you happen to be new. Anyways, let's hit a like goal of 1,000 likes for that LR Goku and that SS3 Bardock Goku and his daddy. <laughs> Uh, hype. <laughs> Anyways, that being said, let's go ahead and talk about it. So, Goku coming. The best LR in the game that's not the LR transformation units. The, basically, the hardest hitter. Uh, very, very good unit, right? You know, best is subjective, but hardest hitter isn't. Uh, you know, when he gets that, you know, 18 key super, he's just tremendous. He's tremendously overpowered. His attack stack hits over 6 million, you know, on mine. You know, and mine oh, barely has one dupe now, but at the time, he's plus 1,000, no dupes or anything like that. And he's hitting over 5.5 or so million attack stat, doing incredible damage. Uh, super tech types get four key and 100%, so he's just like LR Bojack and stuff like that. Uh, Mighty Mask, he's got that four key and then the secondary typing getting two key and 70%, so that's pretty awesome as well. Mega Colossal Damage with the Dragon Fist and greatly reduces defense. He gets 120 defense at the start of the turn, and... He gets 180% attack minus 70% defense. So that cuts him down to a net gain of 50% more defense when he performs an Ultra Super. So they take away most of his defensive abilities, but give him an insane attack increase considering that he's an LR. Right now he has the orb stats on, but these are how he looks without orbs. So yeah, he's got tremendously high attack already. Um, they, like I said, they cut back his defense, but if he doesn't get the uh, 18 key super, he's a very, very good tank. But I will say... On an SS3 team, which, but um, you know, we're about to get with Bardock, he is almost always going to get that. Like, maybe once every, like, four or five turns, he won't get it, depending on your orbs and how lucky you are with orb management or, you know, how bad you are with orb management, I guess. Uh, and feel free to look at any of my showcases of this unit on the Japanese version to attest to that. But I'm very excited for him. I didn't pull Bojack on Global, so hopefully I can pull this guy. Now, you may be wondering, like, what, what is he coming on, right? Because first and foremost, he's coming tomorrow night. Uh, so right now, it's currently the morning, 2.30 and 2.13 in the morning on the 23rd. So literally tomorrow and then just before the 25th, 30 minutes before it turns to 25th uh, Pacific time. So he's coming. Um, you may be wondering what he's coming with. He's coming alongside Tapion. So... Tapion is dropping alongside the story mission for the uh, Wrath of the Dragon. So that's pretty awesome as well. So before I talk about Tapion, the Wrath of the Dragon event does have this Trunks. He has a built-in critical hit. I have a showcase of this unit as well. You guys know I'm very good at showcasing everything. Uh, he's a natural SR that Dokkan awakens. Um, the other one's way down here. He has a little sword. Awesome art. I remember this moment from the movie. Uh, anyways. Dokkan Awakens, like I said, built-in crit, attack plus 50% when performing a super attack, medium chance to perform a critical hit. Very, very awesome unit. They do that 3,000 potential system boost stuff to him too. I really hate it, but it is what it is. All right, so on to the big kahuna, which I actually like. Now that I think about it, I actually like this art more than the other one. So that's today's question of the day. Which one do you prefer as far as the two goes? I personally prefer I think this one's more simplistic. But anyways, he's a giant category leader. So... Actually, this is good timing because I'll be uploading a video on the Giant Category team today that meant to go live two days ago uh, with the Lord Slug updated onto the team. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out later on today. Hit that notification button to stay uh, tuned for that either way. So Giant Category, Giant Form Category gets three key and 150. And they also get one more maximum number of turns to transform. Typically, they have one turn that they can transform. So if the event takes too long, they're never going to transform again. Some of the newer rebirths and stuff get a second turn. Uh, he's basically adding one more potential transformation to those units, which is only really good in a very, very long event. So unless your team's really crappy or, you know, a very uh, suboptimal build or low super attack levels or whatever, you probably won't ever get that. <laughs> now, Tapion is initially a tank, and he's, he's very polarizing for that. Like, a lot of people say tech Tapion is better. And I don't necessarily disagree. I just think that they are for different uses. This one is literally defense 90% of the time. What I mean by that is he reduces damage received by 50%. But when he dips below 50%, he's able to transform into Harutagarn. Um, and Harutagarn, I believe, is the best uh, giant transformation type of character in the game. He just has really good natural stats. So Harutagarn's awesome. Again, giant form transformation. Not the, not the awakening mechanic, as Global calls it. Not the awakening of... 
you know, the UI Goku type transformation. It's called Awakening, not those type of characters, but giant form like great apes and stuff that use that mechanic. But anyways, he's able to turn into Hurtigon. The seal breaks. Otherwise, this is where he really gets bit in the butt. But it's when he's only below 50% does he get an extra 150% attack increase. He hits so hard with that attack increase, especially with orbs invested like any other unit, right? But it's only when he's below 50%. So that really sucks. 50% is a really crap restriction, but that's how the unit works. Um, and there, it seemed like to me when I first got him that it sustained through the event and he just needed to hit below 50% one time. But no, it apparently isn't the case, unless that's not how it was supposed to work. Um, it's when he gets above 50%, it goes away. It just doesn't have the attack anymore. Um, and then he can also transform a second time into Hurudigarn. From there, it might be a bit of a nuisance for you if you don't like seeing the transformation so much otherwise. Uh, he is not farmable either, unfortunately. This is another reason why people say the tech one is better. Tech is actually farmable because on the Hurudigarn event, this physical free-to-play Tapion drops, another unit I've showcased if you want to check him out. 40% uh, extreme class enemies get debuffed as well. So he's not bad. Not great, not bad. Very nice debuff, but unfortunately debuffs get nullified on newer events. Tech Tapion is awesome. Uh, this is his Dokkan Awakening. So down here is the initial. Here's a Dokkan. So he's an orb changer, first and foremost. But he gives tech types... I forgot he does this, actually. This is really cool for, uh, for uh, Battlefield 2.0. So 70%, 3 key. And supreme damage to the enemy and lowers attack. Pretty awesome that he debuffs enemy attack on a super type unit. That's not very common on super types. It's more prevalent on extreme types. So I like that. Attack and defense plus 80% at the start of the turn. So outright, he has very, very consistent attack and defense boosts, which are things that Tapion AGL type does not have. Uh, and then this one, medium chance to perform a critical hit. So he has another unit that has a built-in critical hit. The first unit, I believe, had this was LR Trunks. So now they're starting to pop it in. Uh, to other units so that's pretty awesome now another more recent unit that global uh recently got i believe as well just because their release schedule is all out of the freaking order <laughs> based off of jp anyway um was the free to play kaba another unit that has a really good crit chance built in uh if i'm not mistaken changes str key spheres to rainbow spheres so this is awesome just for consistency rainbow orbs are so valuable just because they produce orb paths that might have not existed maybe you have a red orb in a random spot that's breaking a chain that you would obviously be able to use changing into rainbow orb is really valuable in that scenario or in the more obvious scenario for the uh, the super saiyan 3 super tech type leader the dokkan festival exclusive super saiyan 3 tech type uh he uses rainbow orbs for his secondary part of his passive you could technically get a maximum of five more uh more more commonly you'll get three to four but you can get five they can line up in a perfect world in a perfect scenario you know five across but you know otherwise you're gonna get maybe three or four on average but that's about it very good link skills i believe the exact same ones for the most part minus transform to the agl one but like i said this one's farmable too so that's another thing to consider hoy really good extreme type support not gonna go over him but he's very good i used him on my first extreme str uh run that i completed versus uh the super battle road it was pretty funny because he was very important uh minosha is a good tank against tech types i believe right tech type enemies lose 25 percent of their attack which you'll never lose admittedly defense receive or damage received minus 40 percent when guard is activated which is only against tech types not against physical types against tech types because he cannot guard against physical types he can only guard against tech types so he takes reduced damage against them this great Sandman is another unit that you can get. By the way, Hoi and Minosha are summonable. Um, they're they're not free to play technically, but they're summonable SRs. Uh, great Sandman is free to play, and notice it says Great Sandman. That means he's not Ultimate Gohan. He can be used on the Ultimate Gohan category team. He'll be very useful there. Uh, attack plus 40%, allowing him to be offensive a little bit. He also gets the three-turn attack raise. Super class allies pick up 20% attack, which is very, very good for support. He also gives himself this, so technically he gets 60% attack increase. Otherwise, very, very good link skills. Shocking Speed and Z Fighter, namely, are very, very, very important on the Ultimate Gohan category team. Uh, whether you have LRs or not, that's a very, very important couple of links to have, especially because LR, the, uh, excuse me, the uh, Ultimate Gohan leader has those. Great Sandman 2, or uh, Saiyan Woman, whichever you prefer. Peppy Giles category, 2 key and 30%. So she's not the best Peppy Giles leader. Um, she, I, I believe she is the best aside from Ruby Ann. Um, 
But otherwise, she's not the best. Natural Peppy Gals leader. I mean, Khalifa would technically be, like, if not the best, probably second best. But she doesn't have Peppy Gals category leader. Uh, defense plus 60%. That's right. She has the defensive variant. Super class allies get 40% of the defense. So that's a really massive buff. Buff, excuse me, to defense for your allies. Otherwise, we get an awakening for AGL Bardock that's been in the game forever. Super Saiyan Bardock AGL. He Dokkan awakens. Super Saiyan 3 category gets... Uh, Super Saiyan 3 category, AGL, Int, and Physical. I didn't know he had all that. Okay. They get two key and 40%, so that's pretty awesome. He is very, very viable. <laughs> He's very versatile. Leader skill. Supreme damage, lowers defense, attack plus 80% when performing a super, which is honestly the exact same, you know, passive increase when performing a super that units like AGL, Super Saiyan, Blue Vegeta have, and the STR and AGL Godku have, so that's pretty interesting and he gets 80 percent defense for five turns from the start of the turn i don't really like five i've come to realize that with five um you might make it through with that sustaining depending on your team and depending on the event but five is too short i think seven is fine some people will argue seven is too short i think seven is too fine especially if you have a good team uh which again could be a first world thing but nonetheless i think it's fine but i don't really too much care for five but very good unit uh he is again summonable as an sr but he's going to be featured on the banner so he's going to be very very common i will say uh otherwise here is the bardock and then here's the dokkan awakening for the bardock three key 130 uh you know to the hp and 170 attack and defense so very very good leader a lot of people were saying he wasn't going to come just because he was so out of whack and people were you know speculating because dragon ball heroes i told you guys he was going to come i very you know i was very uh you know positive that he would i didn't really doubt it but just because the unit i just didn't think there was any reason to keep him back from the game um you know just also because he's not only from dragon ball heroes he makes an appearance in other media as well so i, I just kind of figured he would come and here he is so very very happy about this because he's such an awesome unit uh attack and defense plus 100 when performing a super attack all super class allies get 40% attack when 70% or below on HP. One of the best support passives in the game. Unfortunately, it's locked behind a 70% restriction. Unfortunately. Uh, his attack and defensive boost is, I believe... I don't want to say the same as SS4 Gogeta's, because I feel like that's understating. I think it's below. I think Gogeta gets 150, right? Uh, 120. Oh, never mind. He just gets an attack and defense boost here. I'm tired. Apparently, I need to go to sleep. It's 2.30. <laughs> uh, but Bardock is awesome. Very, very good unit. So I'm very excited for that. 3.8.5 uh, updated general protection regulation. Yeah, so all of Bandai's games have been doing this little thing where it's like, oh, yeah, we'll be tracking data. Are you going to allow this or reject it? I just hit reject personally. So they added that. Uh, adjusted user interface. Fix some bugs. What bugs, Bandai? What bugs? There was a bug. This is one of them, I guess. It pertains to Bergamo. Shout out to the boy getting one stone compensation if you had you know well not if you had the issue but just you know it's just if you logged into the game i guess so here's the announcement for the tapion event here's the announcement for the wrath of the dragon story mission now last little bit is i'm curious as to how this banner will look on global just because this was a christmas anniversary banner uh it had both tapions on it it has you know these ones that are on the, on the image as well the reason i point out both is because tech isn't in the art but tech is on the banner as well um physical again is the only free to play tapion if you were wondering about that or confused about that but i'm curious to see how this will be will it be like double like will it be kai's rewarded or what will it be uh because it was i believe two master roshis per summon which i need banners like this to come back because i need the kai's bad uh on jp anyway uh but it was it was a like i said a christmas type banner uh celebratory type banner these were the featured units on it. So I don't know if they're going to do the same thing or not. But just want to give you guys that brief look based off of JP. So anyways, that's it. Hope you all enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Of course, I'm going to get up out of here. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Concerns, all that other stuff. Have an awesome day and take it easy, guys.